Call all hands. Beat to quarters. Come out the gun. Stand by this tablet battery. One broadside into it, if you please, Captain Bush. Pointers on target. Lin stops ready. Aye, aye, sir. Ready. Fire. <laughs> Michael Redgrave as C.S. Forrester's indomitable man of the sea, Horatio Hornblower. seafaring career, but as I look back now, I can remember none graver than that which faced me as I prepared to sail in my frigate in search of the Natividad. I had captured her before in harbor, by night and by surprise. Now, I must meet her on the open sea, where her enormous superiority in firing force must give her the advantage. That was bad enough. But now, I had the additional responsibility of a high-born and influential passenger, Lady Barbara Wellesley. When I returned to the ship after calling on the Viceroy at Panama, I summoned Bush, my first lieutenant, to my cabin. Mr. Bush, where's Lady Barbara? She's on the quarter deck, sir. I had the carpenter knock up her hammock chair for her. Huh? I had a bit of awning rig so as to give her some shade. Mr. Bush, the Lydia is a frigate about to go into action, not an Indiaman with nothing to do but pamper passengers. Uh, no, sir. If Lady Wellesley takes advantage of her position and forces me to carry her to England, I cannot refuse. But this is no reason why my ship should be turned into a... a, 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 a boudoir. No, sir. Confound your Bush. Can't you say anything but no, sir? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, uh, forgive me, sir, but uh, it would have been highly dangerous for her ladyship to stay ashore with yellow fever spreading as it is. Mm. So she seeks safety by coming aboard a ship which is about to fight an enemy twice its size. Now, hark you, Mr. Bush, no good will come of this. If we win the battle, we shall be censored for exposing her ladyship to danger. If we lose it, oh, we shall... I cannot imagine you losing any battle, sir. Not if it was the whole Spanish fleet instead of just one ship. Yes, when I want your opinion, Mr. Bush, good or otherwise, I will ask for it. How am I going to pace my quarter deck with a woman sitting there? The thing I've just thought is my, my shower bath. Under the pump on deck. <laughs> Look, um, have a screen rigged. See that the crew are warned about dress, too. Um, in this heat, most of them work half naked. Aye, aye, aye sir. <laughs> She was still on the quarter deck when I went to attend to the business of getting the ship underway. It was infuriating. set of the tide, the increasing sternway, the amount of cable still to run out. When I sail forward, I must do so dead in line with the anchor, with no slack in the cable, or we might well bring the masts and rigging about our ears. Hard to starboard. No, but it is, sir. Uh, smartly with the braces now. Now she's checked, Mr. Bush. She's moving forward. Mr. Bush, now, hands aloft, set every sail that'll draw. All hands aloft! Carry them, quickly. Take in the cable. She's making, sir. She's making. Yes. 
Yes, but we mustn't sail up to our anchor with too much speed on it. When I give the order, Mr. Bush, we shall see how well you've drilled your crew. Those sails must come off her like lightning, or we're not to be taken aback. They will, sir. I swear by the crew. Stand by. Now, take a all sail, horses, torches, and get us to your lives. Hard work. Hard work. Captain there. Cable in. Quicker. Quicker. The moment had come. We sail off. The Lydia was drifting up to her anchor. Now was the moment when either she would raise it or the maneuver would end in disaster. Every man aboard, save the wildly rushing capstan hands, held his breath. Anchors free, sir! Uh, Set all sail, Mr. Bush. Aye, aye, sir. By heaven, sir. You've shown those Spaniards the finest bit of seamanship they'll ever see in their lives. Kindly attend to your duties, Mr. Bush. Aye, aye, sir. It was not until we were standing out of the Gulf close hauled I was free to communicate to Lady Barbara the news I had heard from the Viceroy. In any case, good manners necessitated that I should address her. I couldn't ignore her presence, however much I might resent it. She sat in her hammock chair by the taffrail, her servant Hebe, the negress, at her feet. She was in animated conversation with Gerard, the officer of the watch, and I noted with amusement that Gerard broke off the conversation and moved away as I approached. She acknowledged my bow with a smile. Oh, it's heavenly to be at sea again, Captain. And may I congratulate you on your amazing seamanship in raising your anchor. Uh, <clears throat> also, you've given me no opportunity to tell you how grateful I am to you for taking me away from Panama. I was treated well enough, but, well, I was in charge of Her Excellency. An admirable woman, but oh, so dull. In Spanish America, women are treated like Mohammedans. And Spanish American food, oh, <laughs> On the latter point, I agree heartily, Your Ladyship. Well, will you not sit down, Captain? Sit down on my own quarter deck? Oh, thank you, Your Ladyship, but I've never done such a thing in my life. If you'll forgive me, I prefer to stand. I, um, <clears throat> I came to give you good news. Uh, your brother, Sir Arthur, has won a great victory over the French in Portugal. A great victory? Well, that is very good news. I've always been proud of Arthur, and this makes me prouder still. Well, I am happy to be the first to congratulate your sister. Oh, Captain, just look at that setting sun. One almost expects to hear the hiss as it sinks into the sea. Yes, I endeavor never to miss the sunset in these waters, Your Ladyship. It's a, it's a daily miracle. Ah, beautiful. Exquisite. And I hope Your Ladyship was well provided for during my absence ashore. If there's anything further that lies within my power... Well, to... there's just one thing, Captain, that I should like to ask as a favor. What is that? That is that you do not call me, Your Ladyship. Call me Lady Barbara, if you will. Certainly, uh, uh, Lady Barbara. <clears throat> and if Lady Barbara doesn't come easily to you and you wish to attract my attention, you can always say, uh, <clears throat> Oh, Captain, I'm so sorry. Please accept my apologies. I realize now that to mock you was quite unforgivable. There's nothing to forgive, ma'am. And now, if you will forgive me in your turn, I must attend to my duty. Uh, one moment, please. Captain... I, I know that you've much on your mind. I know that before you sail for home, you must fight the Natividad. Will you tell me, what are your prospects in that battle? Well, the Natividad, ma'am, is a two-decker with 50 guns against my 36. She is commanded by Vice Admiral de Crespo, a ruthless and bloodthirsty man who will never surrender. Whatever his faults, he's no coward. But against his force, I have perhaps a little experience. Capable and loyal officers and a very well-trained crew. And they're English. That counts for much. You may be frank with me, Captain. What will happen if we should lose? If I or my crew are taken alive, we shall be hanged or tortured. El Supremo will show no mercy to us for having turned against him. And you... Yes, it shall be my last care to see that you do not fall into the hands of de Crespo uh, alive. Thank you, Captain. But you're not to worry about me, nor to allow my presence to influence you. Should it come to the worst, I too am English and a Wellesley. I know how to die. Let's go, 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 let's go
doubt of you, sir, for permission to shorten sail. Yes, get the courses and the gallants up, Mr. Bush. Uh, aye, aye, sir. Hands to shorten sail. Aye, aye. Aye. Lady Farmer, you ought to be below. I'm afraid we're going to have a stiff day. Oh, no, Captain. This is too delicious after the heat. It's your health, ma'am, about which I'm anxious. If salt water was harmful, sailors would die young. Well, if you really... Hands Sail ho! Sail. Right ahead! Looks like the Nativa Dead, sir! I see her! On the starboard deck, sir! Same as us! She is the Nativa Dead, sir! I can see the Catamite Council! Report to the activity! Aye, aye, sir! She's seen us, sir! She's rolling out on port deck, heading up the window of us, sir! Oh, I see. Unusual for a Spanish ship to face about in challenge. Of course, she's not a Spanish ship now. She shan't get the weather gauge of me, whatever happens. And the voice is there. Right. You are all keep her as near a wind as you lie. Mr. Bush, beat the quarters, if you please, and clear for action. Oh, your place is below, Lady Barbara. Take your maid with you and stay in the cockpit until the action is over. No, no, not the cockpit. We'll leave that for the wounded. Um, go to the cable here. Captain! I have no time to discuss the matter, ma'am. Mr. Hey, conduct her ladyship to the cable tier. See if she is safe before you leave her. Those are my orders, Mr. Clay. Mr. Bush's incessant drilling of the crew showed its value now. Every man knew his job and did it swiftly and well. The decks were soused with water and strewn with sand. The bulkheads were knocked away. The fire parties took their places at the pumps. The boys ran with cartridges for the guns. Down below, the acting surgeon was dragging the midshipmen's chests together in the cockpit to make an operating table. The more this sea gets up, the better, sir. The Virginia Cat won't be able to open that lower gun port. No. Uh -huh. I'll trouble you to have two reefs taken in those topsails. Aye, aye, sir. Top of the world. Two reefs in the topsails. Uh, excuse me, sir. With all this spray breaking aboard, you think we can rely on the flint triggers for the guns? Or shall we have the slow matches lit at the tubs? Yeah, better light the matches in case. Wheel that. Steel or small, blast you. Four ships. Both ships are approaching each other at an angle. Steer so that when we meet, our ship has the wind of the other. Do you understand? Aye, aye, aye sir. Look, sir, there's a puff of smoke. She's up fire. Man's a fool to waste powder and shot at such range. Never forget, Mr. Bush, a first broadside discharged in close quarters with guns carefully loaded by crews with time to think is worth ten under any other circumstances. Yes, sir. We'd be passing mighty close, sir. If we both stay on this course, in fact, we'll meet bow to bow. No telling who'll have the weather gauge. That was closer. Here comes another... Got us two men down at number four gun, sir. Christmas! We could have shaved it close. Stand by, Mr. Rayner. Fire as your guns bear. We don't have to put the helm of weather. A weather letter. Now, hold her as she comes round. Fire! nervousness and fear of some fatal error was gone. I stared across the tossing sea at the Natividad. I could see De Crespo up on the poop. The fellow actually had the insolence to weigh barely at me. We had had the advantage from our maneuver, two broadsides into it at close range, with only one shot in reply. Now we had to pay for it. I saw the rudder of our opponent kick over, and the next moment the two-decker had swung round and was hurtling down upon us. Take your aim! Now, steady, lads. We shall have a broadside from her, too. Fire! Stop your bets! And the smoke tears! Fire as you will! The Crespo was evidently unable to trust his crew to fire independently and was working them to the word of command. He was doing it well, too. At intervals, as the sea permitted, her lower deck ports were opening like clockwork, and her big 24-pounders were vomiting flame and smoke. What work this, sir? Yes. Mr. Bush, have the dead carried away from the guns. The crews cannot work properly. 
The men have better lie on the deck and drag them. It's death to stand in that iron hail. And, uh, Mr. Bush? No, I fear the Nativity had superior forces too great for us to continue this close work. We shall have to use cunning if we're to survive. It's a pity, sir, but I'm afraid you're right. And slow races. Now, Mr. Bush, back the main topsail a trifle to take way off us. And let the Nativity get ahead. Aye, aye, sir. Now, tack ship and run across her stern. A broadside, Mr. Jones. Aye, aye, sir. to receive. Mr. Bush, that their lives and liberty depend upon speed. But 
first ship ready for action is going to win this battle. Horatio Hornblower, starring Michael Redgrave, is based on the novels by C.S. Forrester. Music composed and conducted by Sidney Torch. Produced by Harry Allen Towers.